Good morning. You are attending the Animal Matters Commission hearings for November 1st, 2021. The Animal Matters Commission was established and is conducted in accordance with Article 12 of the Anne Arundel County Code. These are administrative hearings and by nature they are informal, which means you are not hampered by rules of evidence. However, please be aware that you are still testifying under oath. Each party will have their opportunity to state their case. After each party states their case, they will have an opportunity to ask questions of the other party. Please do not interrupt the other party. You will be given ample time to talk. In many cases, we are aware that there is a history. You may briefly tell the commission about the history. However, please focus on the issue at hand. After each case, the commission will have open deliberations. During these deliberations, the public may not participate. If the commissioners have an additional question, you may answer that question. No further information will be heard and a decision will be rendered. This decision is a recommendation to the chief of police or his representative. The recommendation of the commission will be taken into consideration and a final decision will be made by the chief of police or his designated representative. If, as the defendant in the case, you are unhappy with the decision of the commission, you may appeal. For citation cases, appeals are made through the District Court of Maryland. For administrative orders, potentially dangerous, dangerous and vicious orders, appeals are made through the County Board of Appeals. Please call the first case. Thank you. And just to make sure I can be heard, right? I was having some audio issues. Yep, All right, perfect. Agree. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So our first case, we have Animal Care and Control versus Marcia Sturges for the appeal of the dangerous order for Fergus the dog. All parties who have an interest in this case who wish to testify may now come forward and take the oath. Please utilize Zoom's raise hand feature. I'll get you added in one by one and then sworn in all together at the end. Let's see. Okay, Ms. Sturgis coming up here. Hi there, Ms. Sturgis, if you can hear me, please uh, unmute. Okay. And just state your name and address for the record. Marsha Sturgis, 250 Braxton Way, Edgewater, Maryland, 21037. Thank you kindly. Hang out for just one second. I'll get you sworn in. Let's see, I see Ms. Jamie. And Christopher Beard. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you would please state your name and address for the record, uh, Ms. Mantu. Jamie Mantu, 282 Breston Way, Edgewater, Maryland, 21037. Thank you kindly. Hang out for just one second. And Mr. Beard, <clears throat> you would state your name and address for the record? Yes, it's uh, Christopher L. Beard. Um, my attorney in my office is at 170 West Street in Annapolis, Maryland, <laughs> representing uh, Martha Sturgis, who's here today. Thank you kindly. Um, if everyone would raise your right hand. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, uh, Officer Simpson. If you would yeah. please state your name and address for the record as well, uh, you'll need to unmute. Uh, Officer Simpson, 411 Maxwell Fry Road, Millersville, Maryland, 21108. Thank you kindly. And if everyone would raise the right hand, are you going to be testifying today, Mr. Beard? No, I'm just going to be uh, questioning as an attorney. Uh, my client should, I don't see her on the screen, but I suspect she's raising her right hand. Uh, Ms. Sturgis is visible and raising her right hand. Yes, I would recommend up in the top right of the screen, there's the speaker view, gallery view toggle. Gallery view will uh, help. And that's just good advice for anyone listening. All right. Uh, do you declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Uh, if I could get an affirmative from you, Ms. Jamie, if you could unmute. If you could unmute. Yes, sorry. Thank you kindly. All right. Um, if everyone would, please remain muted unless called upon to speak. And we are good to proceed. Thank you. 
Officer Simpson, would you like to begin by um, starting to describe the case for us, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, good morning. Um, on Monday, August 30th, uh, 2021, um, Anne Arundel County Animal Care and Controls Public Safety Department received a human exposure report from the Anne Arundel Medical Center, as well as the county police report, 21728720 for a dog bite to Jamie Roberts. Um, Anne Arundel County Police Officer A. Azar 2421 responded to the address of uh, 255 Braxton Way, Edgewater, Maryland, 21037 on August 29th, 2021, at approximately 3.30 p.m. for the report of an aggressive animal. I'll read uh, Officer Azar's report. Um, on August 29th, 2021, at approximately 15 126 hours, I responded to the area of 255 Braxton Way in Edgewater, Maryland for the report for an aggressive animal. Uh, dispatch advise, advised fire department personnel, we were also responding. They also stated that dogs were separated at this time. Um, upon arrival, I made contact with the victim. I identified, identified as Jamie Renee Roberts. Um, Mrs. Roberts had a bite to her left ankle area. It was wrapped and the bleeding was controlled when I arrived. Uh, Mrs. Roberts advised she was walking. Her dog passed 250 Braxton Way. Uh, she stated she believed that the dog belonging to the residence accidentally got away and attacked her dog then bit her. Uh, the owner of the dog belonging to 250 Braxton Way was identified as Marsha Ann Sturgis. Uh, Mrs. Sturgis had already put her dog inside prior to my arrival. Uh, Mrs. Sturgis stated that she was closing the door to take her dog for a walk when Mrs. Roberts walked by with her dog. Mrs. Sturgis stated that Mrs. Roberts' dogs had attacked Mrs. Sturgis's dog in the past and Mrs. Star Mrs. Sturgis' dog now freaks out when he sees her. Mrs. Sturgis stated that her dog pulled and got away from her. She did state that she did not know whether her dog or Mrs. Roberts' own dog had bitten her. Uh, fire, fire department personnel transported Mrs. Roberts to Anne Arundel Medical Center for further treatment. Animal control was notified and will follow up at a later time. And there was no further information to report at this time. A history check for the address is listed on the exposure report for the suspect dog owner, as well as the victim dog owner was performed in both the animal care and control system, as well as the police CAD system with negative results. Um, I officer Simpson on the same day upon speaking to the suspect dog owner, Marcia Sturgis and the dog bite victim, Jamie Roberts, obtained statements of fact from both parties and photographs of Mrs. Roberts' severe dog bite wounds to her lower left leg. I'll read Mrs. Roberts' statement at this time. Uh, at approximately 4 p.m., could have been a bite before or after. I was walking my dog to the dog relief area as I was coming home. I saw Marsha and her dog emerge from their home at the same time as we were passing. I sped up to be sure to get out of the line of sight so the dogs wouldn't bark at each other. After I got about 10 yards down, I turned because I heard a dog barking. I saw Fergus with no leash on by himself charging my dog and I. He attacked my dog and they scuffled. This went on for a minute or so. I was screaming for help and my dog and I attempted to retreat and dodge him. At that time, Fergus lunged at my leg and latched onto my calf muscle and held on and then repositioned his bite. I also have a bite or a scratch on my hip and my pants were torn as a as I was trying to free myself from the dog. I never went to the ground. Finally, the owner slowly walked over and picked up the leash. 
I then sat on the ground and begged her to call the police. At first she refused, then she finally obliged so when other neighbors came out to see what the commotion was about. Jamie Roberts. Mrs. Sturgis submitted this statement to me as well. Uh, Dear sir, now that I finally had time to think about the fight between my dog, Fergus and the neighbor at 282 Braxton Way, Edgewater, Maryland. This is what I now remember. Her dog was by both her feet and legs. My dog was on the side, but not near her. Her dog was completely covering her so that Fergus could not get near her. I hope this helps. Thank you, Marge Sturgis. Now we did receive a statement from a neighbor, didn't actually witness the incident, but did with witness Mrs. Roberts' injuries. Um, his name is William Sutton. Uh, his statement is the following. Good afternoon on August 29th, 2021. My wife and I came home from getting dinner and found a young woman sitting in front of the driveway. Upon rendering her help, the young woman stated multiple times that she was not sure whether her or her neighbor's dog had bitten her. I don't know whether or not this makes a difference, but the fact that the, sus the suspect dog doesn't have bottom teeth, according to the owner, that may not have been the correct dog. Bill Sutton. I officer Simpson then advised Mrs. Sturgis under the Anne Arundel County Code, Article 12402, paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 of public safety in Article 124905, animals running at large. And due to the severity of the injuries to the victim, her dog Fergus must complete a 10 day quarantine period at animal care and control as well as during the investigation into the incident that occurred on August 29th, 2021. On August 30th, 2021, Mrs. Sturgis was cooperative with Anne Arundel County and Animal Care Control and Animal Control Officer, Officer Adams 8751 and Officer Frommer arrived at 250 Braxton Way, Edgewater, Maryland, 21037 for a mandatory impound over dog Fergus, as well as providing treats and a dog bed. Mrs. Sturgis was given a copy of the animal data sheet 274283 in which she signed advising she was claiming her dog Fergus. Between the dates of August 30th and September 30, September 1st, 2021, I received emails from multiple concerned neighbors regarding Fergus. However, no one had witnessed the actual animal incident that occurred on August 29th, 2021 in which Mrs. Roberts was injured. On August 31st, 2021, Animal Care and Control received the veterinarian records from Greater South River Animal Hospital, 125 Mayo Road in Edgewater, Maryland, 21037 for treatment of her dog Solomon, a shepherd mix, black and tan in color, neutered male owned by Jamie Roberts advising there was no apparent injuries from the incident on August 29, 2021. On September 2nd, 2021, Mrs. Roberts emailed Officer Simpson photographs of her dog's wounds, which are wound, which appeared to be a puncture from a bite on top of his head. On September 1st, 2021, medical records for the victim were requested to the Anne Arundel County Health Department. The medical records advise that Mrs. Roberts sustained two lacerations to her lower leg requiring 13 staples to repair. On September 9th, 2021, after a careful review of the evidence by myself, Officer Simpson, Field Officer Canning, Animal Care and Control, it was determined that the owner of Fergus would be issued a dangerous order under Anne Arundel County Article 12402, 1, 2, and 5, Public Safety, 
in Article 124905. On September 9, 2021, Officer Simpson and Officer Herbert, with the assistance of several staff members, obtained photographs of Fergus, specifically his mouth, showing that four canine teeth were present. On September 10, 2021, I, Officer Simpson, respond to 808 Bestgate Road to issue a dangerous order and public safety packet to Mrs. Serge Sturgis, who also submitted her appeal form and was scheduled for October 4th for an Animals Matters Commission hearing. On September 6, 2021, I respond to Mrs. Sturgis's residence at 250 Braxton Way, Edgewater, Maryland, 21037 for an inspection of a compliance with a dangerous order for the redemption of Fergus. At that time, Mrs. Sturgis did not meet all the requirements of the order. On September 17, 2020, Mrs. Sturgis fulfilled all the requirements of the dangerous order and Fergus was rede redeemed that same day. On September 27, 2021, Animal Care and Control requested a postponement of this case due to a primary witness not being able to appear. Fergus is currently in the care and custody of his owner, Marsha Sturgis, as Mrs. Sturgis is in full compliance with the dangerous order issued to her at the address of 250 Braxton Way, Edgewater, Maryland, 21037, which brings us to this commission hearing today. November 2021. All mentioned events occurred here in Anne Arundel County. Um, I would like to also have Mr. Hall bring up some of the, I know the board has pictures of all the uh, injuries, but I don't know if all the witnesses have viewed them. But if Mr. Hall could bring those up and we can go through each one of those. I can, uh, just a warning for those viewing that some of these can be a bit graphic. So viewer discretion is advised. Let me get this shared here. Just one moment. Officer Simpson, is that on the screen? Yes, it is. I'll flip through them at your direction. Yep, go to the next one. You wanna to go to the next one, Phil? And the next one. And the next one. You can go ahead with the next one. And the next one, is there any more? I think that might be, yep, that one's it. So let me cut this out. So I don't have anything uh, additional at this time. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Officer Simpson. Ms. Mantu, do you have anything else to add? Um, just that, um, so, sorry, um, give me one moment. Just that um, the day that it happened. Sorry, I'm a little shaky. <laughs> um, just because this was really sh been a very um, traumatic thing that's been that happened in my neighborhood where I have lived for nine years. And um, just Marsha and I used to be for like friends, friendly neighbors, and she loved my dogs. 
she would always come out of her way to pet my dogs and um there's I, we've never had any issues in my neighborhood and it wasn't until after the um incident that I even had heard of any of these people I I don't know any of the people that wrote these letters um I honestly I couldn't pick them out of the lineup I I don't know them and I don't know their dogs and just that my dogs have been here for three years and I've never had an incident and um Fergus came here like moved into the neighborhood around March last year and she did tell me that he had a history of some mental things like she he wasn't good with bigger dogs and I believe he had bitten another dog before and um she asked me because at this point we were still like on great terms and um she asked me if we could actually use one of my dogs to see if we could um get Fergus to like like I guess introduce them and my dog my young my youngest dog he is I mean he's young but he's big and I agreed I was like yeah because my dog's like our you know ambassador he's very submissive and you know we can definitely I would definitely be open to trying that in a controlled environment and she was like okay great and my dogs have never attacked her ever but she did go on a crusade which was uh, around the neighborhood which was unbeknownst to me until my neighbors finally were like you know this is what she's saying and she I mean the, the number of neighbors she told this story to which was a completely fictional story I mean if if that had indeed happened I mean number one I asked her I was like I wanted to know what she was talking about and I confronted her about it and I was like because I did not know that her and I had had any issue I continued to say hello to her and Fergus and I realized that she had stopped speaking to me and um she then I the next thing I knew was one day I was walking one of my dogs and she came out into the middle of the road and she was videotaping me and I was like what are you doing like why are you videotaping me and she said it's for the police and I was like what I had no idea what was going on so we had exchanged some words and literally I believe it was nine days later that I was walking by her house and her dog got away from her attacked me or attacked Solomon and then attacked me and I Solomon did have puncture wounds the vet did not see them at first because Solomon has a lot of fur but I noticed it because it started oozing by his eye, which they do have pictures of his wounds up by his eye on his head. And, um, which I did hear that she was also telling the neighbors that Fergus didn't have teeth, which, I mean, Solomon did not bite himself and I did not bite myself. So he does have teeth and, um, every time we have gone past this dog this dog goes crazy like it's jumping up in the air and spinning around on the i mean i'm an avid animal lover so to me i didn't want to blame the dog because i'm just that i i love animals so to me it's always the owner's fault because if you don't have you have to protect the dog against um other people again you have to protect the dog essentially sometimes from itself from being an animal um and i mean i've been around large dogs my entire life and 
I mean, I have three shepherds that are amazing and highly trained and it, I, I don't have to tell you that it, I, I can't really walk my dogs anymore because um, there's this, it's, it, I'm just too on edge and I think I'm, and I don't want to give that, and I know that will come down the leash and my dog will feel bad. So I don't want him, but I don't want to affect my dogs in that way. So I, now my husband does most of the walking. So, but I'm sorry, I'm not trying to ramble on, but um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that I mean, I'm an avid animal lover and I mean, and I, I don't want, I don't want anything bad to happen to the dog, but I do want the dog to be protected from itself, from making a mistake that could cost it someone's life or it, its own life. And I think that's incredibly important. And, and that's pretty much like why I was and why I'm here. And I want to make sure that the dog is protected essentially from himself. And that's all, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Mantooth. Panelists, do you have any questions for Ms. Mantooth before we move on? Yes, I did, uh, Stephanie. Uh, actually, it's a question for Ms. Mantooth and uh, Officer Simpson probably as well. There seemed to be a statement from a witness and uh, Miss Mantooth herself that initially uh, there was a question as to whether uh, Fergus bit her or her own dog bit her. How was that determined? How did that play out? Is that out? a question towards me? Uh, Officer Simpson and, and yourself uh, both. Uh, uh, um, so this is what happened. And so as I saw the dog, coming towards me I was like no I said no 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 and I he came he attacked my dog he had my dog by the face at first and was whipping and I had my dog I had the leash I never let go of the leash and probably I just had Solomon yanked up so that he really couldn't even like he was just kind of like taking the brunt and Solomon's pretty like he he's not much of he, he won't fight back he's not like that at all he's never we've never had that issue with him he just likes to play with other dogs so this was a surprise to both of us so I think I was holding him up and there was it this went on for maybe like a minute and it's hard to gauge the timing of it but I was screaming for Marcia to come and help me and I looked at her and she was just standing there blank stare at me like in the middle of this and at some point he Fergus lost his grip on Solomon and I at, in that moment I was thinking let's get out of here like and we tried to go Solomon's in front of me because I had the leash up like this and Fergus grabbed my back with my leg and I felt him reposition I said he I said, I screamed with a lot more, um, not good words, but I just was like, he bit me, he bit me, he's biting me. And at that point when he was biting me is when Marsha came over and retained her dog. But he also got me at one point in the hip was when he, she pulled him away and it ripped my pants. And at this point I was, I knew at who had bitten me and I even said Marsha excuse me but I said your fucking dog bit me and she said and I quote I know I know and I'm sorry so and that is a direct quote she her and I both were at an understanding about exactly what happened and it was not until another neighbor came out that then she was like well I'm not really sure but I have never had a question um I read the email where it said that I said um I didn't know which is completely incorrect my attorney has obtained the 
um, police body cam footage and at no point in time did I ever say I didn't know. I mean, it was very obvious who bit me. It, I mean, it wasn't even a question. It was, it, I mean, her and I both knew it was her dog. And so I'm, I mean, and the other thing is, is my dog remained on a leash the entire time. And as we were getting away, she, or as we were trying to get away is when he lunged for me. And I don't know if that was, he was, I, I don't want to go into dog behavior because I'm not a dog behaviorist, like trying to, I was just, my leg was the closest thing to him at that point. So he was trying to stop us. I'm not really sure. So, but I know I'm more than a hundred percent certain that her dog bit me. I mean, it, and she knows too. She very much knows. So because again, verbatim, her comment was, I know, I know, and I'm sorry. And that was the only apology I ever received from her. She told me I did not need 911 and rolled her eyes and walked back up to her house, at which time she did have put Fergus away. But at one point she brought Fergus back outside and I started screaming because I still had Solomon as I was laying on the ground. I still had my dog with me. And I didn't understand why she was bringing the dog back outside. I thought for a second, because of her demeanor towards me and telling me I didn't need help, I didn't need 911, that she was going to let the dog back. I, I don't know. I was in a panic. Okay. So, I was just wanted to clear up the, uh, seemed to be a little something in the case there. Uh, and I just wanted to clear that up. Thanks. Officer Simpson, you have anything to add? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I think you're talking about in the, one of the things in the police report. Um, and I'll read this section again. It says, Mrs. Sturgis stated Mrs. Roberts' dogs had attacked Mrs. Sturgis's dog in the past. And Mrs. Sturgis' dog now freaks out when he sees them. Mrs. Sturgis stated her dog pulled and got away from her. She did state she did not know whether her dog or Mrs. Roberts' own dog had bitten her. Um, also, you have the statement from uh, William Sutton, who basically rendered aid to Mrs. Roberts. Um, he had stated that um, upon rendering help, the young woman stated multiple times that she was not sure whether her or her neighbor's dog had bitten her. Uh, but unfortunately, he's not here to testify to that fact. So. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any other questions for Officer Simpson or Mrs. Mantooth before we move on? Thank you. At this time, uh, we are ready to hear um, your explanation of the events of the day. Um, Ms. Sturgis? May I uh, take the lead as her counsel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and uh, I just had one question. Uh, may I ask a question of uh, Mrs. Mantooth? Yes. Um, Ms. Mantooth, what area of your body was first bitten by a dog? My lower left. Um, Is that your lower left? My, my lower left. I mean, I guess it would be between my calf muscle and my ankle. And... Where were you positioned in terms of your body when the, was the dog behind you at the time it bit you on your calf? Behind me, yes. And you were facing in the opposite direction than the dog? Yes, and Solomon was in front of me as I had him up like this with my leash. No further questions of her. Um, so I'll pick up, unless, I, unless there's a, additional questions, I'll follow up uh, with uh, our presentation. We plan to present two brief witnesses, Mrs. Sturgis and uh, Jim Henson, a trainer um, who has been, who's available, but he's been unable to sign on. Um, I don't know if you're able to uh, include Jim Henson. He should be sworn as a witness. 
Yeah, I can definitely help with that. Let's see here. I do see him in the attendees section. Let me bring him up and swear him in. Mr. Hansen, if you can hear me, please unmute and start your video. go unmute start video perfect i can hear you i can see you can you hear me all right good morning yes sir if you would please state your name and address for the record sure james christopher hansen uh my business is at 5800 woodcliffe road in Bowie, maryland 2020 20720 um suite 105 thank you kindly if you would please raise your right hand do you declare an affirmative of the penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. Thank you. Um, first, I'll, I think I'll present uh, my client, Martha Sturgis. Um, Ms. Sturgis, um, what is uh, the name of your dog? Fergus. And what's his breed and age? His age is about four years old, and he's a uh, he's a mud. He's a retriever mix. And uh, did you recently get information um, concerning his breed? Um, yes, the Humane Society gave it to me. I I don't know if I can share screen because uh, there is a number of uh, we should clear up what kind of breed he is. There's been a reference to it being a different breed, but. Uh, I can share a screen if I'm able to. Uh, yes, sir, you should have that. Uh, down at the bottom, there should be a green button that says share. I don't know if you can see this. This is, uh, can you uh, see this? Uh, doc, doc? Nothing, nothing yet, sir. Okay. I'll go back to share a screen. Um, it brings up a number of documents. Maybe this. Oh, I mean, there we go. You got it. And then can you see this document now? Yes, sir. Uh, so I'm just sharing with you. Uh, Ms. Sturgis, is this, can you explain what this document is that I have before the members? So the letter shows that they had um, initially um, mis um, that labeled him, and so they wrote a um, Angel wrote a letter saying that she had mislabeled him, and he is considered a rep retriever mix mutt or an well, all the background. Culture. You say they. Where did you get the dog, and why did you uh, obtain this documentation? So the dog originally came from Georgia, um, where they had a American shelter mix and then um, was brought up to Alabama to be neutered. And they also put shelter mix and then came, we were helping the rescue down in Georgia with some of their dogs because they were overcrowded. And so he came up on a um, caravan with 10 other dogs. And where did you obtain the dog from? From the um, Humane Society of Calvert County. And that's where you went for this documentation? Correct. And uh, it has several pages to it. We've been looking at the one that identifies it as a American shelter dog. It's a lab mix. Is that correct? Correct. And the rest of these documents uh, would indicate that it's a lab mix. Is that correct? Right. Or they just labeled it an American shelter dog. All right. Here it says uh, breed black uh, laboratory retriever mix. Is that correct? Correct. And under animal details. Yes. It's all part of the same exhibit. That would be our exhibit one, and uh, including a rabies certificate if, uh, if that can be uh, documented in such a fashion. So um, I can stop sharing screen at this moment. Um, do I need to do I need to do that in order to see sharing screen? Um, 
Yeah, you, there should be up at the top of your screen an, an end sharing button. Okay. Got it. Um, with respect to uh, uh, yourself, what is your, just giving, just give you a brief background. What is your occupation? I'm a registered nurse. And how long have you been a registered nurse? 43 years. And where have you been working? Um, for the last 24 years, I've been working in an emergency room in the last part time. And then the last seven years, I've worked in the emergency room part time on the weekends. In the last seven years, I've been working at the United States Naval Academy in their medical department. How did you, uh, just one question further about shelter dogs. How did you uh, gain an interest in shelter dogs and then acquire this dog? Um, I've been work I've been um, a volunteer at the Humane Society of Calvert County for 15 years, and I've fostered over 30 dogs for them in the last 15 years. Okay, well, let's talk about this particular dog. Um, uh, you uh, heard your statement given. Is that statement that you gave correct that the dog got away from you that morning? Yes, I lost the leash when I was trying to get him back inside. And why, what were the circumstances? I was taking him out to go to the bathroom when I saw um, Mrs. Mantooth walking with her dog and my dog started getting upset. So I was trying to get him into the house and um, he pulled away from me. And so I ran after him very quickly. Uh, had this ever happened before where it got off the leash? No, never. Okay. So you say you ran after the dog. And, um, what did you uh, observe? Well, I ran after the dog because he went at he went after the dog. He ran to them, and I pulled him off very quickly. Um, when you say pulled him off, what do you mean pulled him off? He was in front. Um, her dog was protecting her legs. My dog was in front. And the both dogs were nose to nose, and I pulled them off. Okay. Pulled them um, away. I, um, did, how many dogs did she have at the time? One at the time. Okay. And you're familiar with her dog? Um, I know who he is, yes. All right. Um, and uh, you said, uh, what was your relationship with her, uh, at least as of that, before that incident? Heard. Um, she's a neighbor. Okay. Have you but ever that, been out? We, but I've I've avoided um, being around them because my dog was reactive, was afraid of her dogs. Uh, had there been a prior incident before? Yes. At the end of March, I was walking my dog to the common areas, and their dog, one of their dogs, was off leash in their yard and ran after my dog and attacked him. Well, this particular incident um, happened. Uh, near your property is that correct no it was by their property no at the time the dog it ran off from your doorway is that correct the one that happened just recently yes the, yes. the one that mm -hmm. we're at this hearing for right yes correct okay how how far from your property was this incident with it within say 20 30 feet maybe 20 feet okay and that's from your doorway yes okay uh, um, we're tell 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 us exactly what you uh, saw happen that day. So my dog was um, was up, up, upset. So I was trying to get him in the house. He yanked the leash. I lost the leash. I ran after him. He did get to them. Her dog was in front of her legs. My dog and her dog went nose to nose. I yanked him off very quickly away from them and put him over the other side by my, on my driveway and then took him inside. Well, my specific question, did, did you see um, your dog uh, bite at the time? No, he was just with his dog. They were just um, scuffling. Yeah. You saw the pictures and photographs of her yes. leg. Right. Did you Specifically, was there anything between you and your dog that prevented you from seeing your dog the whole time? No. And so you saw these photographs of her leg. Did you ever see her dog go behind and grab her by the leg or ankle? 
her dog was in front of her legs the entire time. Did, well, you're saying her dog was between her and your dog? Correct. Was there ever a time when your dog got behind her dog and got between the two of them? No. Has your dog, uh, you heard testimony about a prior dog bite. Has your dog ever bitten a person or a dog before? Never. Um, have you ever made a statement uh, to your neighbor or any neighbor that your dog has bitten anyone before? Never. Okay. You heard her statement that uh, two things that um, you said, she said, you said, I know, I know at the time of the uh, event. Did you ever say some words to her to that effect? No, I did not. That did, was me. Did, well, did you hear her say anything to you that your uh, that your dog was biting her or that you needed to get no. your dog away? No, oh, she, no. she just was screaming. She was just screaming. I was there within 30 seconds to grab my dog away. Um, was was there any anything said between the two of you from the time this uh, incident happened to the you know, at all that morning? No, nothing. So you heard her testimony that you took your dog inside and then brought your dog back out. In a, no, in I, took my, I took my dog inside and left him inside. Did you mm -hmm. ever hesitate to offer to call 911 or anything like that? She asked me to call 911 and I called 911. Was there any delay in your response to call 911? No. no, there was not. What did you observe to, uh, in terms of her injuries to call 911? She said she got bit. She wanted me to call 911, so I called 911. And then my okay. neighbors came out to assist her. Did you see where she was bitten? Yes, I did. All right, what did, where did you see that she was bitten? It was on her lower right leg. I'm sorry, lower left leg on the inside. And was that the back or front of her leg? It was in the side. Side of her leg? Correct. Okay. With respect to your dog's teeth, can you just explain to uh, the members of the uh, Animal Matters Commission and what the situation is with your dog's teeth? So my dog does have his four canines, but he is missing all his bottom teeth. They're very worn down. Okay. And, then, and, the, upper, and the upper ones are also worn down. Okay. Um, well, let's go into some other factors because they're going to be looking um, among con the consideration that will be considering your animal's demeanor, prior history, and mitigating circumstances. Just in general, address your animal's demeanor before this incident occurred. He's very calm, very quiet. He never barks. Okay. Have you had any complaints from any neighbors about your dog's disposition before this no. incident? No, no, never. Now there was a description about a campaign on your part. Um, do you, do you understand what she's referring to in her testimony? No, I one or two pay, um, neighbors had some neighbors had come to me, but no, I never said anything. Well, I have a number of letters. Um, did you? To address the issue of the animal's demeanor, have you obtained uh, letters or statements from yes. your neighbors in regards to your animal's demeanor? I have. And you have those letters. And right. People, and did those neighbors send those letters to uh, the agency? Yes, they sent them to um, the um, animal control officer, Simpson. So rather than me presenting those letters from your neighbors in terms of your dog's disposition, um, as I understand, um, they have copies of those letters. Is that correct? The animal control? Yeah. Yes. I know it's referenced in testimony. Okay. Um, so would you describe this as a rare instance? This is the only incident that ever happened. Since, uh, let me see, has this dog ever been vicious towards any person? Before? No, no, never. All right, so after you received your the order, 
did you post your property and write your neighbors in regard to the uh, requirements about your dog? Um, those neighbors are in 175 feet? Yes, I did. Okay. And uh, what other did you, have you been compliant with all the requirements of you? Yes. And why don't you just uh, briefly tell us uh, how you've complied with all the conditions? I have two signs, one in my garage and one on my front door that says dangerous dog. I have a six foot fence with two locks on the inside. I also put it added extra chicken wire so no one can stick their hands in it. I also, when he goes in the car, he has a muzzle on. All right, just so I know, is this your first dog you've raised before? No, this is my uh, third dog. Okay. Um, you have insurance that covers this dog, is that correct? I, I do, plus I have extra, I obtained extra insurance. Okay, and that was an additional cost to you? Yes, it was. Okay, um, let's see, is there, and have you gotten your dog trained with uh, additional uh, training? Yes, he just spent the last six weeks at Complete Canine with Jim Henson. He and, just finished his six weeks and he's just signed on for another six weeks. All right. And uh, have you have you seen any changes uh, in the way you're able to control the dog or the way the dog behaves in terms um, of uh, obeying commands and things of that sort? He has done exactly what he was supposed to do during training. Do you have any uh, other information before I call Mr. Henson as a witness that you would like uh, members of the Animal Matters Commission to know about your dog before you, they make their decision in terms of either um, the mitigating circumstances or any history that is relevant to these proceedings. I just want them to know that he's a very kind and gentle dog. He does extremely well with all dogs and other people. He's loved by my entire neighborhood. He's good with puppies. He's good with older dogs. And um, with the kids, they, they are petting him. They're like, they can be sit on him and he doesn't, re he doesn't react. He just gives them licks and kisses. Okay. Well, you see this as a situation where the dog had a, uh, did in particular have a history with the other dogs. Correct. Okay. All right, I'm gonna ask Mr. Henson some questions. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Sturgis. Um, I call my next, well, others may have questions of her. So before I call Mr. Henson, I'll do, allow everyone to ask any questions. Yeah, I have a few questions um, for Mrs. Sturgis. Um, Mrs. Sturgis, how, you, you said that the shelter made a mistake on his breed. They determined he was a lab mix. How, how did they do that? Because they went, they had, um, they had received a, um, a group of dogs also from PG County that day where that were pit mixes. And by accident, Fergus was included in that group. But when they reorganized the paperwork, they realized that he had um, been included with PG and not the a group of dogs from Georgia. Do you have that paperwork today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Okay. Would we be able to see it? Um, they, they, um, Mr. Beard showed it to you. I just saw that they changed the breed. I didn't see but that actual made the determination that there was a mistake made. It was on the letter showed that she made a mistake. She wrote a letter. And then if you saw the um, paperwork from Rome, Georgia, that it said American shelter dog. Let me ask you, did they do a DNA test or anything like that to determine it was a lab retriever mix? No, mm -mm. no, they did not. And I just want to ask you a couple questions about the attack itself. Um, let me ask you, did you witness Fergus bite Mrs. Um, Mantooth? He was not near her at all. He was you in did. front of her dog. So you didn't witness your dog bite Mrs. Mantooth at any time? During that I didn't incident? see him near her at all. Okay. Let me ask you, did you see her dog bite her I leg? See, I couldn't see her dog because my dog was in front of his hers. Okay. So you didn't see either dog bite Mrs. Mrs. Man. No. 
I was in, I, all I saw was my dog in front. They were, they were nose to nose. He was, he was, her dog was covering her legs. So I, I just, I, what I don't understand is how you couldn't see. So you saw neither dog. Did you see the actual incident itself? Yes. I watched the whole thing. My dog was in front the whole time. And, but you didn't see Mrs. You, you could not see Mrs. Um, Mantu's dog biter, biter. You didn't see any kind of bite from Mrs. No, no. Okay. All right. And let me ask you, you, you mentioned that you've gotten, that you've gotten um, additional training. Now that training was part of the dangerous order. Was that correct? Yes. Okay. And also the assurance, was that yes. part of the order as well? Yes. Okay. And you said you had additional insurance? That was what I, that's what I meant. Was that the $300,000 policy yes. required by the dangerous order? Yes. Okay, great. All right, thanks. That's it. Thanks. Do you have one question for uh, Ms. Sturgis? Um, so Fergus is a four-year-old dog and... Um, how long have you had him? I've had him since uh, February 8th. I was fostering him for a month and then he was such a great dog and so calm that I decided to keep him. So he's a failed foster. Okay. So you've had him less than a year? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a few. Um, first, I would say that I've been doing this commission, I've been on this commission for about five years now, and I've never once seen where a dog's breed, other than potentially for its size, had much to do with anything as far as a bite goes. Um, so I don't know, you know, any of that testimony is fine to present. I have no problem with it, but uh, whether that dog's a pit bull mix, a lab mix, a uh, cocker spaniel mix, doesn't really pertain to, to this case as far as I'm concerned. Um, but the question I do have is one statement I heard you make was that this incident took would took place 30 feet from you. No, maybe 20 feet. It was like, right. It was across the street. All right. Well, you also just testified that it took you 30 seconds to travel that amount of space from the dog got away. Yeah. I ran very quickly. They're the, they have very, we have very short driveways in the townhomes. I, I just looked at the map. I saw, I saw what the, what the neighborhood looks like. I have a very good view of kind of where this could have happened and, and your, your line of sight from your door and all that stuff. You can kind of see that from an aerial photo, but I'm just going back to your testimony. You testified it took you approximately 30 seconds to, to get to the area. I mean, I'm looking 20 feet from me right now, and it would take me all of five seconds to get 20 feet. So I'm just trying to determine whether that's uh, whether you're correct in 30 seconds or, or you, did you misspeak there? I'm trying to put the two together. That's all. I mean, I was right there when he when I lost the leash. I ran right after him. Okay. And just to clarify, Ms. Sturgis, your testimony is that uh, you did not see any bite occur at all. No, I did not. No but, I, but I just want to let you know, I don't, I mean, I didn't count the seconds. I just, as soon as I lost the leash, I was after him. It could have been five, 10 seconds for all I know. I just didn't like count the seconds. I was just. That's right fine. There. I mean, you, you, you responded 30 seconds. I just want to make, that's why I'm giving you. Yeah, no, I mean, I was there right there. Sorry. I was as fast as I could to get there. Um, I do have one other question. You know, you've referenced, you know, Ms. Mantooth has met, mentioned there was an incident that she was unaware of in the past. You say that there was an incident where her dog was off leash and attacked your dog. Was it, were there any other witnesses to that? Or was no, it just, her, just her husband. Just her husband. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Did that occur during the, uh, there was testimony about um, sort of a meet and greet between the dogs prior? There was never a meet and greet. Okay. I never asked to, I had never asked to have her dogs meet and greet my dog. That was made up. And I do have actually one more question. Um, I'm sorry. I keep, I'm referring back to my, book. um, you, you, you've testified that this, that this has never happened before. So with, to your testimony, this, this dog has never had an incident with another dog since never. February 8th. Never. You, correct? never. And no, there was not when he was at the uh, other rescues, either right but how and this dog is four years old correct about they think and he's been in and he's been in rescues since he's been a puppy or the, I mean, that's what um, i don't i yeah. don't know his history when how long he had been down in georgia i think he had been down in the rescue there maybe about two years i'm not sure they okay. didn't i didn't ask for any of the history all right thank you 
commissioners, any other questions before we move on? Okay, thank you. Back to you, Mr. Beard. Thank you. Um, I call my next witness, Jim Henson. Mr. Good morning. Henson. Just to clarify, it's Hanson, H-A-N-S-E-N. My apologies. No um, worries. Mr. Han Hanson, um, could you tell the uh, members of the commission your background and how you got involved with this case? Sure. Um, I started working with dogs in 1988. Um, I was a nephew of uh, well, now retired Major Dale T. McIntyre of Baltimore County Sheriff's Department in the Canine Division. Um, so I got my start through there, um, at which point I uh, started working as a civilian uh, with a Marine out of Annapolis, Maryland, uh, with the Breed of Park Dog Training, where I did a six-year internship um, working with aggressive and last chance dogs. Um, and then from there, um, just uh, I've been going at it uh, pretty much, you know, 24-7. We just opened a facility in Bowie, Maryland. Um, so I've got about 30 years in the business. What were the circumstances um, and steps you took before you uh, saw the dog here? Uh, well, the first thing I had her do was I immediately signed her up for a reactive aggressive dog class, which is a maximum of six dogs, um, where I have two to three trainers in. Um, and within, I guess the first 15, 20 minutes, it was easy to determine that the dog was not aggressive. Um, so we were able to move them into a, uh, a larger class. And uh, what information did you have about the dog before you started your training? Um, all I knew that that he had uh, been accused of biting somebody. Um, pretty much, that's that's all of the knowledge that I had. Until and the until the dog the wanted to make sure she was doing everything right. Tell the members of the commission uh, what uh, training you've given the dog um, further and uh, how the dogs behave. So the first thing we did was we acclimated the dog with a pinch collar for communication. Um, and it also gives the owner uh, much more control over the dog. So if there is ever any, any instances, um, the likelihood of the dog pulling out of the owner's hands are very, very unlikely. Um, we typically start with basic obedience um, and getting compliance from the dog, um, knowing that the dog is going to um, give you whatever it is that you asked for, whether it's a sit down, stay, let's go, heal. Um, and she's, uh, they, they've done wonderful in my class. All right. Uh, any other observations you have that can offer uh, to the commission in terms of uh, the uh, circumstances? Uh... Well, I, I will tell you with Fergus, um, I'm seeing fear-based reactivity around German Shepherds. Um, he definitely goes into panic mode. Um, I'm not sure. I believe that was the breed that he um, had the altercation with, um, but they're very breed specific and then they can absolutely pick out the, you know, um, certain breeds. Um, so, See, being able to see that, again, I wasn't there, so I can't speak on what happened that day. Um, but him being able to, he was not aggressive with those dogs. He was reactive, and it was definitely fear-based, um, which usually tells me that the dog has been in some type of altercation with that breed before. All right. Um, do you think this dog has been receptive to all the training you've offered? I do. I do. They've done well here. And has Ms. Sturgis been cooperative uh, and uh, compliant with everything you've uh, offered her? She has. As a matter of fact, she's usually here 15 minutes before her class starts and usually ends up sticking around a little bit later, too. Very well. I don't have any further questions. So that would be the uh, questions I have, unless members of the uh, commission have uh, questions of, of uh, this witness. Commissioners, any, any questions at this time? Uh, has some um, fear reactivity to certain breeds? Um, is it possible that um, fear can also be a motivator for biting? Um, yes, oh, absolutely it can. 
ठीक है it's not always aggression it can be a reactive response as well yeah so typically what i see with him is he will he will get in front of marsha um and when i say typically I, i've seen it twice um and we worked through it but the, you know the you'd see in the body language the tail would the, the tail would be covering his genitals or where his genitals would be um he'd kind of back into her and he would bark a little bit um but again very easy to control so because of the equipment that we use um one other question um what kind of training do you think that he would benefit from going forward i think he's already enrolled in the proper program for him which is just to continue number one keeping him in uh, a group that suited um um for for them um and just continual repetition of 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 training and putting the dog in uh, situations in a controlled environment um to determine hey did we work through this or are we going to have any issues um so just her her being continuing with her training i think is uh i i think it's crucial for any dog though i i think it's for crucial for any dog um creates bond it creates trust um and it creates a good well behaved dog Thank you. Mr. Dus, I have one question. Um you have rescued and fostered um several dogs in in the past. Um what kind of training if any do you offer um these dogs when they first come into your home? Um I mostly do puppies when they're like between 4 to 12 weeks. Um I have signed I did do training with um a woman through Calver County uh, Humane Society her name is Julie um and the Humane Society also had offered training for us um but mostly it was just puppies just getting you know keeping them until they were adopted and had you done any training with Fergus uh since February when you got him Probably yeah i did a, a private lesson with leash free living for 1 hour and he also went to daycare at leash free living um to in which they also do training while they are at the daycare. And how many days a week does he go to that? Um it was it wasn't a, like every week it was like maybe once or twice a month. Um there was a week that he was there every day because I was having the house painted. And they do on they do the training while they're in daycare. Okay. That's all the questions that I had at this time. Commissioners any other questions for either party? a couple questions. Um Mr. Hansen, have you seen any um human aggression in Fergus? No, not at all. Not at all. As a matter of fact, he's made pretty much friends with everybody in his class. Okay, thank you. Um Officer Simpson, I I know we've kind of covered this subject, but I wanted to ask a question. It looks like it's the police report. I don't believe this was the one that you recited. Um the police it says the law incident report is that the the printout is 10:15 but it it is uh the report closed on 8:29:21 and it was this is what I was a little bit confused about the uh the documentation states and it appears that it's um Mrs. Mantu's statement and it is going back to the at this on this report um it says unknown which dog bit her i just wanted to make sure that this was that you could tell me yeah let me clarify it says here it says the owner of the dog belonging to 215 250 braxton way was identified as marsha ann sturgis mrs sturgis had already put her dog inside prior to my arrival Mrs. Sturgis stated that she was closing the door to take her dog for a walk when Mrs. Roberts walked by with her dog, Mrs. Mantu. Uh Mrs. Sturgis stated that Mrs. Roberts' dog had attacked Mrs. Sturgis's dog in the past. This is coming from this is coming from Mrs. Sturgis. And Mrs. Sturgis's dog now freaks out when right. he Yeah. Oh sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. I don't mean to interrupt. Sorry. Um it the actual police report it looks like This is like. the actual this is the actual report. Can you oh, tell okay. me what page 
Elizabeth, you're looking. Oh, Paige. Hmm, good question. Let me see. I'm looking here. at page two and two. I'm looking at page. It says um, Anne Arundel County Police Department draft. What page that is? Um, I can show you here and, right now. And oh wait a minute, now I just lost it. Um, Look, what page in the PDF? <laughs> I'm working on that. Um, can I ask a question? A, um, I just want to say, I believe on the PDF, it's page 11. If that helps uh, uh, get there. Do you, do you see what I'm seeing? Now I've just lost it. I'm sorry. Um, where was it up here? Stephanie, did you say 11? That's what I counted on PDF pages, page 11, if that helps. Is it is 11 the... That's what I'm seeing now. Do you see what I'm, did you see what I'm, what I saw there, Stephanie, the list? Yeah, of, the top of the page is um, saying that this is an Anne Arundel County Police Department draft. That's right. Right. And so I you're- I wonder um, why it would say that. I mean, that's, if that's a statement, well, that was Elizabeth, a statement from Mrs. Sturgis or Mrs. Manton. Elizabeth, if I'm looking at page 11, what I just read was, upon arrival, I made contact with the victim. This is the narrative from oh, oh. Starts and Ronald County Police Department draft. It says, upon arrival, I made contact with the victim, identified as Jamie Renee Roberts. Miss Roberts had a bite to her left ankle area. It was wrapped in bleeding, and the bleeding was controlled when I arrived. Miss Robert advised that she was walking her dog past 250. She stated she believed the dog belonged to the resident. That. Uh, uh, the residents accidentally got away and attacked her dog and then bit her. So I don't see where uh, the owner belongs. And then it says the owner. And then that's where it's saying that she did not know whether the other dog that. So it's saying the owner is the one that stays. It's, it's basically what we've already seen heard in testimony. The paragraph higher is, is the victim. The paragraph next is Miss. It is. Yes. Mrs. Sturgis. Yes, Mr. Sturgis. Right. Yeah, he speaks with the victim first, and then the, the next paragraph, the owner of the dog belonging to 250 Braxton Way, is when um, the officer's talking uh, with Mrs. Sturgis. And from what I gather it's here, not read on the um, on that summary page, but we can we can move past it. It's just not how it's read um, written on the on the summary. That's okay. We can keep going. Agreed. Um, Just to clarify what, what we're saying is that um, the testimony the narrative here says that um, Mrs. Roberts uh, had an injury in her left leg. And then the testimony at that time um, to a misreport draft was that Ms. Sturgis wasn't sure which dog. Yeah. Well, so it's, it's actually page nine, but. Um, oh, page nine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I clearly see now what the confusion is, and that's the call log, and about midway through the page, it says, unknown which dog bit her. That's the confusion, yes. Gotcha, okay. Well, if Ms. Uh, not this was not the one that called 911, yeah, that, that makes sense, right? If, makes, if she's claimed she doesn't know, and Ms. Sturgis was the one that called 911, then that would make sense. Okay. Yeah. I think, right. I mean, if this is the call log we're looking at. Yeah, and on that call dialogue, I mean, there can be things in there. It says initially her right ankle was bitten. Right. Okay. Which we know. Right, I just wanted to make sure yeah. I was understanding everything. Since I read it. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Okay. Commissioners, any other questions for either party? No, I believe someone had a question there before we deliberate. I think there's someone had asked for a question there before. Mr. Hey, Hanson. Hey. Mr. Hanson, you want to make a rhetorical question? Go ahead. Yeah, I was just curious in regards to the young woman that was bit. Um, 
what was she doing with her dog? So when Fergus ran up to her and her dog, uh, I was curious of, of how she was handling her dog. Can I answer that? Yes. Um, as far as, uh, so my dogs are really well trained and ex and listen to very well. So the only thing I kept saying was no, no, no. And then started screaming. And I actually, I have a prong collar that is on my dog. So I have complete control of my dog with a prong collar. So I had him like, unfortunately choked up like trying to like get like lead him away and I mean I had him on I was basically like making it so he couldn't even he was basically just taking bites essentially and which which the dog has I mean my dog had puncture wounds I mean and it's my understanding that Fergus didn't have a, a scratch on him so my dog had a scratch and his ear was floppy for it's still sometimes kind of floppy okay but he, but, he was he was trying to prevent protect you and you were holding him up correct yeah but i don't see how and had i not seen the i put eyes on fergus down behind me because i went to grab the back of my leg to get him away and I was thinking to myself, don't go to the ground because, you know, good, I, I good. no, that was smart. That don't was real go smart. to the ground. Yeah. So I was thinking, don't go to the ground. So I, but I put, got him away, but still kept a hold of Solomon and like yanked up in front of me. But had I released the leash, I mean, I don't, I, I just was trying to make it, And I can tell you that. I know that Marcia says that she came right over, but she stood there and watched until I was bitten. And then she knew, oh, oh shit, I'm going to be I've, in trouble. I've, I've got no skin in the game in regards to any of it. I'm just here for the dogs. Um, no, I 100% just... and trust me, I'm an avid dog lover. So that's why I said in the beginning, you weren't here yet. But um, it, I never blame the dogs. I blame the owner. So that's... Like well, well, why the, I'm the, here and, is to protect that dog. And the, and the, the reason I ask is because you you what what can happen sometimes is you get what's called um, redirect aggression. Yep. So so yeah, I'm very I, I can't tell you. I, yeah, I'm very familiar. I have three German shepherds. I, my parents bred Rottweilers growing up. I am extremely comfortable around dogs. Well, I was. <laughs> so. It, and I don't understand why they say my dog was protecting me and then would bite me. So that doesn't really, at the same time, doesn't really make sense to me when, when that's the defense over there. But I've never once said I didn't know who bit me because Marcia and I both know who bit me because, she, like I said, and I quote, I know, I know, and I'm sorry. And she said that she can say she didn't say it, but she 100% said it. I mean, it, it rings in my ears. I can still hear it. Again, I'm just trying to work out the dog behavior. Um, in regards. Oh, also, okay. well, um, before so we get too far away from dogs, it, this man too, before we get too far away from it, because you just reiterated it again, I just want to nail this down. Um, you said you've never, you never once said that you didn't know which dog never bit once. you. Are, do you once. know your neighbor, Mr. Sutton? I do. Um, he is. And you were in his driveway good. that day. I was in front of it a little to the left and um sorry give me one second um I was a little to the left he um as I mentioned was on Marsha's side completely I was actually completely floored by the reaction I got from them when they came outside or or got out of I'm sorry hold on I keep getting messages um because he ran to me and immediately assumed that I had done something to Marsha because her, him and Marsha are very good friends. So he was not even trying to really help me is until his wife finally, like, I guess she's a nurse as well, just like Marsha, they work together, whatever it is. And so 
they and they live right across the street from Marsha. This isn't my house. My house is about is at the end of the block, but I do have to pass Marsha's house to go anywhere, to get in and out of the neighborhood, to get to my house, from my house. So they know Marsha very well. And it was, it was, I mean, I can tell that he, I immediately knew that they thought that it, I, that I was the problem. And I'm sitting on the ground bleeding and I'm thinking, oh my God, can you, and I even said to Bill, I was like, can you at least get me a towel to wrap around this? Because I was losing so much blood. Also, my nose was bleeding, like, pretty significantly, and um, from what both nostrils. Nose, what was your nose bleeding from? Honestly, I don't know. I think, I mean, I didn't have any um, any noticeable injury from it. I, I'm not really sure. It was just bleeding. It could have been, I, I don't know if it was stress-related. I'm not sure if, like... I, it got bonked somehow, or I, I really, I, that part was baffling to me. I don't know why my nose was bleeding. It was, it could have just been a, a result of this stressful situation. I really don't know. No, that's fine. But um, I will say that, um, again, I've been truthful through this entire thing. I... I mean, the dog, the, as opposed to the dog doesn't have teeth, which really throws me off too, is the dog clearly has teeth and the dog, I mean, the whole thing is just crazy to me. Crazy. I have a follow-up question for Mr. Hansen. Mr. Hansen, can you hear me? Mr. Hansen? Uh, can anyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I can hear you. Mr. Hansen, can you hear me? He's not responding. I, I think he might be able to hear you, but he may not be able, his microphone may not be working. Uh, can you speak, Mr. Hansen? I think we've lost him. Mr. Hansen, no. if you can hear, can you at least give us a thumbs up so we know you can hear? Yeah, he's he's struggling his audio on and off. He's trying to fix it. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we hear anything. While we're waiting for him to um, adjust, um, or maybe he's there. Maybe he's back. Mr. Hansen, do you have connectivity at this time? Maybe not. Well, while we're waiting for that, um, I do have a quick question for um, Ms. Mantooth. Um, I was just looking through, and so um, Solomon is, it looks like Solomon's a 12-year-old dog. No, God, he's correct? three. He's three? Okay, I thought I saw 2009 as a birth date. Um, I, no. Maybe it was. Gosh, no. Okay, um, so he's three. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. what I wanted to clarify, making sure I was looking at that correctly. Yeah. And I also want to say that Solomon is very is a very large dog. He's a king shepherd. I know it says shepherd mix, but he is a king shepherd. So he's pretty large. Any reactive bite that would have happened would have never happened on my lower leg because of where I had him, like, and also because of his size. He could have never gotten that low. I, not especially with not me yanking him up. So I just want to rebut that it could even have like been a reactive bite because number one, I put eyes on it. And number two, the positioning wouldn't even make sense. Okay. Thank you. And I see my error now as they had the year before the month um, on the rabies on here, just looking at that part. So yeah, it might've been 2019 was his birthday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was just looking for that. So. Thank you. And um, Mr. Beard, if we want to try to reach out to Mr. Hansen again. Yes, I'm just hoping he can hear me. Yeah. I'm not seeing him either. Mr. Hansen? Yeah, he, he may be having, he's sitting in his vehicle. He may be having Bluetooth issues. They may be trying to connect through his car and it might be giving him issues that way. So we do have visual, we just don't have um, audio. I could try to reach out and call him, perhaps. Sure, if you have a question for him. 
Um, okay, except that he looks like he's using his phone. <laughs> That's yeah. probably what you're calling him on. We try to reach out to him. I just typed a message into the chat as well. Can't so reach you can't reach him that way. Yeah, I can't reach him by phone. It brings up a recording. Oh, I'm back. Uh, Jim, Mr. Yes, Hanson. Sir. Um, there's some testimony just now while you were off that through by uh, um, the neighbor that uh, a victim that her dog is a large shepherd, a king shepherd, and could not get to her ankle. Is, is it possible for a large shepherd, a large size shepherd to bite one in an ankle? Um, can I see the bite? Uh, is or if you're just uh, asking in general. Well, they do have photographs. Yeah, I, I can. Give me one second. Let me just pop that file back open here. Put that here. There we go. And once again, for anybody viewing uh, outside of this hearing, these can be a bit graphic. So viewer discretion is advised. And here we go. Come on, computer. There we go. Should be on the screen now. Can you see that? I can. Where is that on the body? Oh, uh, here. You can uh, there's see some other shot. Photos. So you can see the back of the ankle there, and that's the back of the calf. Okay, so was there any Punctures on the front side. Yeah, okay. Definitely some tearing. Um, yeah, and that's the reason I was asking about the uh, whether the dog was being restrained because what you can get is what's called um, uh, redirected aggression. So in protection work, for instance, um, I can't tell you how many times I've been bitten by my own dog when you have the dog going after somebody else and they get so frustrated that they can't get to it. A lot of time they will turn around in blind rage and just bite whatever they can um, unintentionally, injuring the handler a lot. So that's that was my question. Um, so so it's is possible. it dependent, were those separate bites or was that one bite on bo got both sides? Uh, I, did, I don't know if you look. Yeah, yeah, if you could describe your bite it wounds. Um, so it was a bite from the side, and he bit down and then let go and then bit again and repositioned a couple of times, almost like he could, like he was trying to get a good grip on it. So it's a couple of bites is the answer, Mr. Hansen. Okay. Um, but again, he was. Well, it, let me finish, but Mr. Hansen. Mr. Hansen, <laughs> is there? Yes, sir. My question, my question to you: is What you describe as uh, aggression back on the owner in a melee, would that happen where the dog would bite in such a fashion? As a possibility. Oh, I can absolutely a possibility. All right. No further questions of Mr. Hansen. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Hanson, I have a few questions. Um, yes. Is it possible that during an animal attack, a dog on dog attack, that any dog can redirect on a person next to him if they interfere with the with the with the dog with the uh, fight? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, would you say if an owner is pulling up on a prong collar, a dog the size of this German Shepherd of Mrs. Mantooth, if she's pulling up on the prong collar? And pulling up the dog high while the other dogs come in for the attack, 
would it be a likelihood that the, the, the large German Shepherd would bite her in the ankle area? Um, well, my only question is, is, is in all of that, did, was that dog, I'm guessing the dog, a King German Shepherd, he's a buck, buck 20. Um, he's up there inside. Bit, right, right. So was the, was the handler able to hang that dog up high enough through everything without that dog coming down and touching ground at all? Now, according to Mrs. Mrs. Mantu's statement, she's pulling up on the dog with a prong car to keep the dog away which is natural because she feels that her dog is being attacked. And she also, sure. I guess, doesn't want her dog to redirect onto that other dog. So it just doesn't seem like if she's pulling up on the, with a prong collar, it would be kind of hard for the dog to, to go down low and then bite at the ankle area. Does that seem well, a little I can, No, it, it doesn't, man. And, and when you're in that kind of situation and, and, our adrenaline's going, their, their adrenaline's going. It takes a split second for that dog to come down, hit them feet, grab a bite, and then get young back up. So um, I, I'm just saying I've been bitten more more times than uh, than, than, I, than I like um, in, in the course of sport training and things like that and working with the police department. Okay, I'm a little more confused now than I was before listening to all this, and I don't know if this question is for Mr. Hansen or Ms. Mantooth, but... Um, the pictures that I saw, you're telling me that the German Shepherd is a, is a very, um, is a large dog. And so even on all fours is tall, correct? Mm -hmm. But the pictures I saw of Fergus, Fergus is a, a small dog, correct? He's smaller, yeah. So if the, if the Shepherd had been pulled up, how is the small dog reaching the Shepherd? At some point, that Shepherd had to be down near the ground well, so it, the little dog most, could reach it. Yeah, at most it was, <clears throat> at most it was, uh, can you hear me? Yes, oh. I can hear you. Just at most it was, I had like him was going like this and trying to move around, move around. He wasn't entirely yoked up the entire time, but because at first I wasn't sure when the dog was charging, he did look aggressive, but I wasn't positive what the outcome was going to be. And I didn't want, you know to just assume that it was gonna um, be a aggressive. So, because if it had just like run up and like they sniffed whatever and it fizzled out. So I didn't want to put that squeeze up tight because your dog reacts to that immediately and it's gonna think, oh, danger. So I did not do that at first, no. Okay. Thank you. But again, it was one of those things where things were happening so fast and I'm trying to keep a clear head. I'm like thinking, okay, you know, what am I doing? Stay out of the way. But also I, I thought for a moment, maybe I should drop. I literally thought for a moment, maybe I should drop the leash and grab Fergus's hind legs because that is something you're supposed to do during a dog fight is grab the aggressor's back legs. But in the heat of it, I decided to just keep on hold of my dog because I was thinking, you know, I was scared. Like if I let go of the leash that they would keep fighting, but then fight and run and fight and we'd never catch them or something. Um, and I mean, through all the haste of everything, I was like, just trying to keep a clear head about what was going on. And again, like I said, when he was biting me, I was thinking, oh shit, this shoot, excuse me, it, this is going to turn on me. And then, um, I, like I said, I thought when I leaned down, I thought, oh, just don't go to the ground because he could get you in the neck, like things like that. So I was clear-headed during the entire thing trying to stay calm but also right. like right. so but yeah so when you lean so then in the opportunity when you lean down obviously the dog was not held up and restrained because you were doubled over oh right? gosh no no not at that point because I was getting bit because I literally said he bit me he bit me and that is when Marsha came over it was that was the uh that's why I think if like before if it was just the dogs fighting she would not have helped me but because i her dog bit me was why she rendered aid because other before that and she did tell me that i didn't need 911 and walked back to her house and again brought fergus back outside her look to me was quite terrifying it was a blank stare of complete the one she has right now 
Thank That's you. exactly what it was. Uh, and it was scary. I, I see that. Thanks. I'm, thank you. Uh, I see that your hand is raised. Did you have a comment, Mr. Just? Yes, I just wanted to clarify that I never saw um, Mrs. Mantooth raise her dog on the prong leash at once at, at, at the entire time. He was on the ground scuffling with my dog. Okay, I'd also you. like to say that before this all went down, um, uh, Marcia had expressed concerns about us even using a prong collar. So I find that the leash that she was using, we tried to explain to her that the leash and setup that she was using, she had almost no control over Fergus. And multiple neighbors knew that. And many neighbors actually knew that. They were, because Marcia, I mean, she doesn't get around fast. It was my understanding that she had two hip replacements and she just kind of goes walk moves very slow. So controlling a dog that is that powerful is concerning. It's a concern. It's been a concern for other people that have seen it. I mean, and even with the past dogs that she has fostered, they've that there has been some concern. Thank you, Miss Mantooth. Miss Sturgis, do you have your hand raised? Yes. I just would like to clarify that the, um, what Mrs. Mantooth has been saying is hearsay and none of those conversations occurred. And also that hearsay is, is that we're getting is. away for, I'm sorry. And we're getting sorry, away no. from the, um, the, the case. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to direct the commissioners to page 25. And there are a few um, affidavit, I guess, you know, statements on behalf of um, Fergus and Miss Sturgis. Um, so page 25 is from a, a Jeannie Kuhn. And um, I mean, these are, you know, wit not um, witness statements, but these are character um, character statements on behalf of Fergus. And so I just um, wanted to draw our attention to the things that are included in this packet of documentation. Um, and so um, it says also in regards to the other dogs involved in the incidents, it and other two dogs are, have constantly been an issue. My own dog has been almost attacked by the German Shepherds this couple owns. I've even thought I have been bitten, but thankfully it was just a bruise. Anytime we are out, I am constantly hiding my dog or picking him up, carrying him away before anything can happen. Reports have even been made to our homeowners association about the German Shepherds and how they are aggressive and constantly causing issues in the neighborhood. Many of the dog owners have even asked the couple to keep these dogs away from our dogs because of issues these dogs cause in the neighborhood. Thank you for the time reading this email. I hope the contents included help to resolution of this incident. That's on page 25 is a, a reference um, from a, a Mrs. Kuhn in the neighborhood. And then the next page, page 26 from a Brianna Eller. Um, again, I assume a neighbor that has submitted um, a character reference for Ms. Sturgis and uh, Ferguson. Um, let's see saying that Fergus is a great dog. Um, I too have had issues with the dog that is involved in the is incidents. I have had issues with all three of the German Shepherds, Solomon, King, and Lord. Anytime they see me out with my dog, they always try to get after him. I am not saying they are bad dogs, but they just appear to be dog aggressive, which is a risk not only for them, but for the other dogs as well. I cannot even walk by their home on the sidewalk without them barking in the window and jumping at it to the point I am sometimes afraid they are going to break the window. In all honesty, I have completely changed my routine in walking my own dog in an effort to avoid these German Shepherds. Other dog owners in the community and I constantly ask each other if the Shepherds are out and about so we know to be on the lookout for them. There are even been incidents where I have hidden behind cars with my dogs until they pass if we happen to meet just to avoid a confrontation. They have literally pulled their owners across the road and off of skateboards in an effort to go after my dogs and other dogs. We have other 
dog owners, uh, we, other dog owners and I have even reported them to the homeowners association as we are afraid of the safety of our own pets. Um, and so I've the, never received you, anything from the homeowners and, and association ever, not no, once from the, uh, from about my dogs. My, my dogs have never been a problem. They've never been an issue. I've never heard this from anybody. So, I mean, I think that's all hearsay. They've submitted these as, um, uh, this is included in this legal document as uh, gotcha. it is hearsay technically, but this yeah. is the animal control commission is an informal proceeding. So no, I understand. And it honestly, the rules it, of evidence. yeah. And honestly, it, it blows my mind because I, I mean, we're moving out of the neighborhood. We'll be out of here by the end of the month at the end of November, because like I said, I, I, I can't, I don't feel comfortable in my neighborhood from the campaign that, Marsha has gone on trying to say all this stuff. I mean, I could get neighbors to write letters too, but honestly, I don't think I need to because I didn't do anything wrong. My dog was controlled and on the leash. Her dog was out of control and off the leash. And otherwise this wouldn't have happened. So, I mean, but I, like I said, I have many neighbors that said, I will come and vouch for you. But again, that's so, I'm not involving people that didn't see the incident. I'm not. Yes, man, that's, just, please do not construe any of the questions that we're asking as somehow. No, I understand. I'm just, what's it was a really emotional but, event for me. So I've been, I, I mean, I've been in therapy over it. Like it was, I'm an avid animal lover. So to me, this like, I take it very personally when those those emails really, I mean, for lack of a better word, and I don't I mean, mean to sound provided, like a child. I, I don't know how this works, but as the victim in the case, was Ms. Mantooth, Ms. Mantooth provided a copy of the dangerous order that was issued? Oh, yes, I think so. Okay, so I just want to point out, um, and I have no idea how these emails came about, and I'm not expressing an opinion one way or another as to whether or not there was actually a campaign for or against you in, in any way, but as part of that dangerous order, Ms. Sturgis was required to provide notice of that. Oh, dangerous I know. Order. Okay, yeah. so I just, so I'm, I'm not sure that all of these neighbors became aware of this. Um, they, they knew before. They may, may very well have, but even if they had not, they would have been required to be notified um, yeah. of the order. And I do want to say again, my reason for being here, my, my whole reason is for the protection of that dog. Because I don't think that Fergus going back to having no muzzle or a proper collar situation is safe for him because you have to protect the dog from itself sometimes because dogs are dogs. And I'm not asking for the dog to be put down. I'm not asking. I'm asking that the proper precautions are taken so that this doesn't happen again. And then the dog or to a kid or that the, and then I don't want to see that, like the dog is put down. Like I'm, even though the dog bit me, I'm still, you know, like I still, I have empathy for Marsha because I am a dog owner and I know this must be incredibly difficult, but like I said, I just want to per like, to make sure that the dog is protected from himself from making a mistake. And that's, and I, I just like to point out also I, just what you said, Miss Brianza. Uh, just looking at the emails, the um, it's all in testimony there. The, um, the the character witness emails from the neighbors. I just looked at one. It was dated August thirtieth. The order is dated September 9th. So obviously, you know these people were aware of this before then. To her point. So to be fair. And, 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 and just just to clarify, you know, my intention of reading um, those is that it is. Um, hard to understand the dynamics of what's happening. And I think we're in a tough position um, of knowing what happened. And, um, but I do think that it is valuable when neighbors um, do uh, share what, what it's like, some outside perspective. So it is worth reading. So that was my intention of bringing yeah. that, although it may um, make it more difficult for us in decision-making and, um, and also very, very difficult situation with a severe bite, but then also um, a lot of hearsay. And so um, just to 
be fair and bring up all sides. Um, that's really my intention is to yeah, bring up right. everything. I understand. That I'm sorry. <laughs> is testimony. Um, uh, these letters were written and submitted in part of our packet. So I just uh, bringing that, but without an intention of um, of anything other than um, understanding that it's it's a very complex and difficult. Um, a difficult case with many facets. So that, that was my intention of, of reading that. Um, and then well, I'm just kind of thinking, Ms. Well, now, oh, sorry, and, and just to also say that, you know, again, a lot of what we hear is, um, is hearsay. He said, said, she said, and, and it's, um, it can be difficult for us to whittle through some of, some of it and make our very best recommendations. And, that, and that's what this is today is, is a best yeah. recommendation. Um, that's really all that we can do. And, and again, this is a, a panel that will make um, a recommendation at, at the end of this all, but but again, it, it's um, these were submitted and I felt that they should be read. But um, no, you know, I, I, I I understand. But now I kind of wish that I had, had. But the thing is, is like I kind of wish I had gotten my neighbor, many neighbors that offered to yeah. write for me. But again, I didn't think that it, I was like, you know what, I'm going to take the high road and I'm going to leave it up to the facts. Like you weren't there. So, and that's kind of how I feel about those letters. That, but I mean, it's okay. And the letters are a trigger for me, honestly, because it, because I have no idea who those people are. I couldn't pick them out of a lineup. I don't know their dogs. I don't know. I've never, I mean, as opposed someone said, first of all, didn't even get my dog's names right. Um, and the wh whoever named them and said that they were bitten like the, I mean if my dogs have attacked one neighbor and then now have bitten another like it's so ridiculous because don't you think animal control would have been notified if it was that bad if it was this like awful yeah, like, and, I, and I really wanted you to have the opportunity to address these letters so that, that's yeah, also... I'm just like blown away by like I, it could have been one of their children. Like, I don't understand how these people are like siding with, with her over this. Like I was bitten. Like, and it's honestly like they've made my life miserable for the past two months. I've been followed around to the point where my husband has to wear a body cam with when he walks our dogs because they are saying stuff and baiting my dogs and trying to get them to react. Like, it is absolutely insane. I bought a house to get out of this neighborhood because I am terrified for my dog's safety. I was like freaked out to even let them in the backyard because I'm thinking, what if they try to poison my dogs? Like, that is how out of control this has gotten. Like, and honestly, it's yeah. victim intimidation is what it is. And Officer Simpson, you have your hand raised as a question. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted uh, to, for the record, as with Mrs. Fergus, um, I mean, with Mrs. Sturgis, I don't have any documented um, uh, complaints uh, or bites um, against um, Mrs. Manchu or any of her dogs. You know, no, no, we don't have any records of them or on the uh, police cab about because there's any nothing to have a record of. Dogs. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like thank to you. remind everybody to please stay muted until you're called. Oh, it's getting kind of, kind of out of hand. I see that Ms. Sturgis has her hand raised as well. I'd also like to clarify that all my neighbors that wrote um, letters in uh, for character witnesses for Fergus, they volunteered. They came to me and asked how they could help. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt again. How do you raise your hand? Because I'm not seeing that option. And that's the only reason I keep jumping in. Because I do see that people are raising their hands, but I do not see that on here. I'm not certain if the phone supports that functionality, but as long oh, as okay. uh, we're in gallery view, if you just put your hand in front of the screen, we should be able to see it. Okay, I got you. Okay, I'll do that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, any other further questions or testimony that anyone would like to ask of either party or provide? We've gotten a lot of information um, to to go through, um, but before we uh, break for open deliberation, I just wanted to give everybody else a, one more chance. Commissioners, any other questions that we have for either party? Or yes, um, I, I, I was going to make a just a brief closing because sure. 
when you're ready. Can I see if there's any other questions before the closing yeah. then? Yeah. Any further questions from either party or comments on testimony before um, Mr. Beard uh, presents his closing argument? Uh, yeah, I just want to clarify, are you appealing the entire order or any specific part of the dangerous order? Ms. Sturgis. Um, we're appealing the entire order and I'll get into that too. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Mr. Beard. Well, thank you very much for your time. If nothing else, you can, I think it's been reiterated. I think you will have to uh, find a difficult path to find a clear path on what happened here because it was a ruckus that went on, everyone agrees. Here we have um, the owner of Fergus, who is uh, a nurse committed in, as all of us are, but this committed as a nurse over the years, um, who's also committed to raising uh, dogs and volunteer to do so. And she, she also trained the dog, this dog, and, I think she's, it's pretty clear. She's not, she's not making a point because she, uh, just for Fergus, I think she's making a point because it's the truth. Um, and I, you, you, what you have here is word on word. That is, you have an injury, certainly, that possibly could be uh, caused by either dog. And you have one version and the other version to weigh, and they're diametrically opposed to one another because, what my client is saying, she's looking and her dog was not in a position to bite her. It's also very conceivable that she could have been bitten by her own dog because there's a number of discrepancies you would have to weed through to try to make sense of what she's saying. And I think your burden is, can you say by the preponderance of evidence has that, that, that you can arrive that this dog bite occurred by Fergus. And I suggest it's not more likely than not. It may be 49% or less, but that's not enough to say it's more likely than not. I think it's a struggle to get to that it's more likely than not in the uh, ruckus which occurred. Um, she's convenient in her testimony and she has a number of discrepancies that came out. She made no mention about looking back at her ankle. Then she says, I'm looking back at my ankle. Um, she says, I held the dog up, but then when someone brings out, oh, that can't be 100%, as she says, because the dog's bit on the head. Well, it's convenient to say that she put the dog down. And, and testimony by the trainer who has experience, it can just be that moment that uh, we're in a ruckus, a dog can bite his owner as well, because he's had that experience as well. So I suggest that someone who has dedicated her career to helping others is not going to be someone who would refuse and she to call 911. That's right up her alley. She would be the one to call it in and she wouldn't hesitate to do so. Um, and there's more to this than meet the eye. There's, um, she describes it as a campaign. Nothing in our testimony suggests she didn't any more than have persons come to her and, and on their own volunteer how they could assist. There's nothing to suggest that they had ill motives to write the letters. And indeed, it's certainly an issue in the statute that you should consider the, the animal's demeanor and all those letters address the animal's demeanor. Particularly how this happened is important because with reference to issuing a citation, this commission can decline to issue a citation to her and one of the grounds that this can be is that the dog, among other factors, was in the immediate vicinity. It's within undisputed testimony, within 21 or 30 feet of her doorway. The other undisputed testimony was this dog got her away from her. What you heard the trainer say was she's training. Uh, it's always training the owner and not just the dog how to avoid this happening again. And he addressed that. Now, what she is, what you see that she has done, and she's co been fully cooperative as a nurse because what you certainly expect a patient to be cooperative. She's cooperative as a dog owner. She's done everything asked of her, but now she's before you saying, wait a second, 
I will do everything required. It makes sense to do that if there's any dispute. But this didn't happen the way this person says it happened, Ms. Mantooth. It just didn't. It's more likely, uh, just as likely that her own dog bit her in the fray, particularly in view of some of the letters that have been described, the way the dogs behave and the way this dog would have be behaved being jerked back. Um, that's not an uncommon occurrence. That's my point. Um, my suggestion is that she does have a, uh, an interest in the outcome, a financial interest in this. She's not just saying this dog can, there's, can, might attack children. There's no evidence. In fact, the evidence is to the contrary. The behavior of the dog, its past history, there's no who, what, how, and when that the dog bit someone else either when it's under her control or when the dog was with a shelter uh, or with the uh, other agency. Um, so I think, I think in view of the discrepancies, I'd, I'd ask this commission not to speculate what happened, not to uh, conjecture what happened. I think the evidence has to be clear to reach a, a burden of preponderance of evidence that one way happened more than the other. And I think on a case of word on word and the injuries that occurred, it's just as likely um, that the dog could have been uh, by her own dog as well in this fray. So on that evidence, I, here's what we're asking. Uh, and uh, I think in view of that, that the, uh, and considering all the steps have been required, we've gotten to this point, the commission can certainly look at those steps and decide, well, we can't, we can't reach a preponderance of the evidence that this happened a certain way. The public is protected. However, this person is doing everything. Everyone has been notified, but we have a duty. Did this happen or did it not happen more likely than not? I suggest it didn't happen and that the order should be of dismissal in this case. Um, secondly, you have every power to downgrade the designation. You can do that as well. You can consider the animal's demeanor, the, the prior history, and the mitigating circumstances, they are very compelling to downgrade it um, in this case. But I think first and foremost is whether this even happened. And I think this person has an ax to grind and I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, can I talk before we go? Thank I, you, again. Mr. Beard. And yes, Ms. Mantooth, if you'd like to briefly um, have a, uh, response or closing statement. Absolutely. So my closing statement is um, I'm actually quite offended that he would even say I would have like a financial motive because I think I've been very clear about my motive for being here and that is for the protection of that dog. So um, I think that is facts and also Marsha has lied many times. She did say that Fergus quote unquote did not have bottom teeth and I think we have you know, rebutted that he does in fact have bottom teeth. She did. She never said it was, oh, his back teeth are grinded down. She said he had no teeth. That is a false statement. She, of course, is going to have all these false statements and try to put, you know, reasonable doubt in the mind because it's her dog and she's um, trying to defend herself. And I think it's, actually hilarious that she would even bring that she got the dog um it it was a it was a mistake and that the dog was not a pit bull because when i have his vet records and it clearly says pit bull terrier so it is a pit bull terrier but i mean that's neither here nor there but the fact that he would even say that i would be here for a financial reason just is offensive because like i have told you guys I, I'm here for the animals. That's what I'm here for. And I just, and she did not want to call 911 for me. And she knows it. She knows it because I said, please call 911. And she said, you do, she said, quote unquote, do you really need 911? And then rolled her eyes and she brought Fergus back out. She did. I have never wavered in my story. Her story has changed. And I, if I have read one of her statements is upon further reflection is what she said. I've never had to further reflect because I was there. I saw it. 
I saw what went on. I had, and as opposed to, I've never had any discrepancies in my story that he's saying in my close in the closing statement. My discrepancy was that this went on for a minute and a half. Marsha's saying she went right over, which is incorrect. She didn't come over and did not render aid until I got bit. So what happened between all of that was a whole cluster, but that after the bite, that was completely different. That. I mean, when we were holding up the dog. So that's not a discrepancy. That's just, you know, it was a scuffle that things, dog goes up and down. I mean, I, I just, it's crazy. It, this is just crazy to me that they would want to, uh, what I want to understand what, it, what happens if the order is taken away? Like, that just means that what, like, I don't have a, a like reason, like, if it takes away from her, what does that mean? Does that mean that she can't, that the dog doesn't have to wear a muzzle? All of the, these things to me are crazy because as a dog owner, if I knew my dog had done that, which she knows her dog did that, I would want to protect the dog and want the muzzle on the dog. That way it doesn't make that mistake again, because if that makes a mistake again, that is life or death for that dog. So what it, I don't know why she, what her um, reasoning is for wanting this order removed, because even if the order was removed, I would say she still should have a muzzle on it to protect the dog. And I just wonder how much she really cares about that dog or how much she cares about what it looks like to the neighbors if the dog is considered dangerous is because she's not obviously, I mean, if that if that happens again, am I correct in saying that if it happens again, the dog is, is a life or death for the dog? That is possible, yes. Yeah, so to me, she knows this happened and it's very concerning that she doesn't want to protect her dog. Like, that concerns me, that's very scary. It's just, she wants to win. And as much as they want to say that I have a financial motive for this, well, maybe she's got a financial motive for trying to change the breed of her dog because her homeowner's insurance didn't cover pit bulls. So, I mean, it, the fact that they were throwing all these allegations at me is, is just, it's, it's offensive, especially when I was the victim here. Again, it's victim intimidation. Can I ask a quick question about the, um, I, I'm sorry to have to clarify another detail, but um, when, when you were bit, Miss Mantooth, were, were, was um, Mrs. Sturgis holding the lead? No, she wasn't. She was at her inner driveway. Okay. She hadn't just, come just over. Wanted, I just want to clarify. I just want to clarify. In her clarify driveway, okay. staring at me blankly. And she even told the police officers, because I watched the body cam footage, that this was bound to happen, is what she said. So, I mean, what does that even mean? And she also text messaged a neighbor and said that I was bleeding to death in the street because Fergus bit me. What? Who says I was bleeding to death in the street? Like, that's a terrifying thing to say. I got bit in the leg. And it's like, and I'm, there's some mental questions I have, like, and concerns with her. And I'm not the only neighbor who but I'll, I'll that... stop you there, though. But um, okay. but I do okay. appreciate you've been through a lot, and I do appreciate um, uh, that it's it's a it's a very scary event, and a lot happens in a in a very quick moment. Um, yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to come off defensive. I just it just for the past two months, it's been a whirlwind of emotions. Where I mean, I'm moving. I bought a new house in a different area because I'm like traumatized essentially i was waiting for yeah my husband even said we were waiting for the neighbors to come down the street with pitchforks i mean and my dogs have never been aggressive towards anybody so 
Thank you for your for your time, everyone, today. Any further comments or questions um, before we deliberate? We can still ask questions that can be answered during our deliberation, but we will not accept any more testimony at that time. Um, so it's not to say that there still won't be conversation and answering questions um, posed by the commissioners. However, um, once we deliberate for, um, or, or once we are in open deliberations, we won't accept any any further testimony. But again, we may ask questions of you. I see Mr. Hansen's hand is raised. Do you have one final thing quickly that you'd like to add? Um, no, ma'am. I was just wondering. Um, I've got eight dogs waiting for me to get in and work them. Am I needed any longer today? I have a quick question for. Mr. I believe Hansen. that we are. Oh, oh, for Mr. Hansen. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Go sorry. ahead. Sorry, Mr. Hansen. So, how likely is it that? I guess the the issue that I'm having is with Fergus. Fergus did not. I mean, has a um, there's a minor puncture on Mrs. Mantu's dog on the head, it appears. And yet there was a bite to the leg without any um, back pressure. How likely is it that Fergus is, is gonna do such little damage to the German Shepherd yet have that type of bite to the, to the leg of the human? Uh, fairly unlikely and the fact that it's the more the back of the leg that was bit it just kind of leads me to believe that this young lady was trying to protect her dog um but in the process it's it sounds it's 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 as likely that that the the shepherd bit her um just out of frustration as it is that that Fergus bit her and um i think you can so, speak to um the way that the nature of a, a dog interaction like this and how terrifying it is for the people involved and that time either goes really fast or really slow in a lot of cases. And there is a lot of, yes. a lot of adrenaline flowing. Um, and for the dogs, it's very confusing, especially when there's a lot of commotion and yelling and, and things happen so fast. It's, it is difficult for anyone to know exactly what happened unless it is recorded. And that's, you know, that when we have video, it's, it's, it's certainly a luxury. In this case, we don't, which is, makes it much more difficult. And, and, a, and it's a very convoluted case. But in, in, um, and we, I just have to emphasize that it is, it is uh, very unpleasant for every party involved and that there are so many emotions involved and that, um, you know, as far as the dogs go, there are no bad dogs here. And that's important that, you know, both, both owners um, understand that we are here to evaluate the case just as it is, as the, the facts of the case as much as we can um, as, as much as we can hear and, and come come to terms with uh, what what happened so uh, just wanted to say that I know um, Mr. Hansen uh, having been in the industry and been involved in, in dog bites that the, the, the descriptions that both owners are um, describing they're very it's very common all of those things and Although there may have been, you know, she said a blank stare or, you know, those, those are things that you hear and often in these cases, and it may or not, may not have been, and it may have been very fast or it may have been slow, but people react differently under these circumstances and, and they are difficult. That's what I wanted to say. Absolutely. They're difficult on absolutely everyone and, and on both dogs as well. So I just want to make sure that we, um, you know, and, and, and all the questioning, I just want to reiterate what both Jennifer and, um, Stephanie said that the questions are not meant to put any blame on anyone. They, we're just trying to get down to the case and what is what is best moving forward and what's fair moving forward. That's all. So, um, yeah. So there's that's just wanted to say that before we stop. Thank you, Elizabeth and Mr. Hanson. Um, I believe um, I know you have somewhere to be, and I, th I believe we. Um, Appreciate your time being here, and um, if you need to to step away, that that's fine. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone. God bless, and and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Do you thank guys you. mind if I put my video on black so I can get ready for work while you guys deliberate? That's but fine. I'll still be here for to listen, and I'll come back on once you guys are um, back. Yep, that sounds fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. 
did I see Jennifer, you had a question? Or your hand raised? Yes, I was actually just wondering if we could break for like maybe three minutes, take a restroom break before we start deliberations. Yeah, oh, that I'm sounds hoping. <laughs> Yeah, okay, great. Um, Phil, can we take a five minute break and um, return then? Yep, yep, I'll get the slide up and uh, that'll put us back at 11.14 and change. Great, thanks so much, everyone. We'll be returning for deliberate. Yeah.
All right, I think we're just waiting on Stephanie. Once she's back, we'll be set. If she's not back already and just with her video off. There we go. Okay. Um, so we are now um, going to break for open deliberation. Um, and before I get started um, in, in asking everyone to share, um, I'll just say that this um, to Jennifer's point, it, it, it's, um, or excuse me, to Elizabeth's point, um, this is a, a really tough um, case and we are here to protect the public and um, decide the disposition of um, these pets and they're all pets and they're all loved and unfortunate things do happen and it's very scary and we um, are empathetic to both sides and we just wanted to and, and to Elizabeth's point there are no bad dogs um, that dog behavior um, can be undesirable but um, but hopefully our measures and our decisions are to help them in success and help owners in success going forward. And, and that's our goal is to help our community and help these pets um, live and everyone live in safety. And that's our main, our main purpose and not, not for um, blame or anything of that nature, but just trying to make a best recommendation that we can. So um, what we have also is to try to focus on the facts and what we have before us of of um, undisputed facts is that um, there was a, a dog, um, Fergus did slip away and was running at large um, and had an interaction with an owner and a dog on a leash. Um, so there was a running at large um, accident, some, a, a situation that happened and um, muddling through the testimonies, but also um, there was a pretty severe bite that is worrisome for me. Um, and as a group, I hope that we are able to discuss further of what to do about a, a very severe bite that is very worrisome for me um, and trying to figure out our best course of action. Um, but again, those are the two pieces that I'm really holding on to that there was a dog running at large and there was a bite and all the in between um, we'll try to figure out together. But that that's where I am um, not wanting to overlook the severity of the bite. I think is a huge focus for me going forward um, in whatever it is that we decide. But um, let's begin um, in comments and discussion. Um, uh, can we start with uh, Tom? Sure, thanks, Steph. Um, yeah, I wanna stick to the facts here. And I do agree, this is probably, like I said, I've been on this mission five years, six years now, and this is probably one of the most, you know, the most, nasty bite wounds I've seen on a human in, in that time, maybe one or two others, but this is right up there. Um, you know, I want to stick to the facts. We know for sure Miss Mantooth had her dog on a leash and was walking by. We know for sure that, you know, with no dispute that the other dog was off, you know, came at that dog. And we know for sure that Miss Mantooth was bitten. And that's all we really know for sure. Um, what I think, what I, after hearing all the testimony, um, I have a hard time with Miss um, um, Miss Sturgis's testimony that she was she witnessed this whole attack the entire time. Yet, and this bite wound had to occur. That bite would have had to have been a pretty serious thing when it happened. It wasn't just like a nip and that thing went away. That that bite wound there would have had to have been some serious interaction between a dog, whether which, which dog, whatever. I would I have a hard time believing Ms. Sturgis did not witness any of that. She said she witnessed the whole thing, yet she has not, you know, she'd somehow missed out on the part where the woman's leg gets bitten by one dog or the other. I think one dog or the other would have been obvious who bit that, you know, who bit her at that time. I, I can't imagine it being, you know, and then and then furthermore with that, you know, Ms. Sturgis is a nurse. You know, it sounds like another neighbor had to render aid at that at some point. So I understand Miss Sturgis is dealing with her dog and there's other things going on. You know, there's a lot of that, but it seems like there's there's definitely more to this as far as in the neighborhood that than we all have, should have to even worry about. So, you know, 
I, I don't really want to get, I started going down that path. I shouldn't have really, like I said, sticking to the facts is if, she, if Ms. Sturgis claims that, that she saw all this and witnessed the entire incident, I have a hard time believing that you would not see a dog biting someone that would leave that kind of mark on you. I think it would be pretty obvious how that happened. So, you know, in my opinion, one way or the other, I feel like at least a, a dangerous order or a potentially dangerous order should remain in place on this dog. The dog did get away from her and did, whether or not it was her dog that made did the biting or not, that incident would not have occurred. That Miss Miss Mantooth's dog would not have turned around and bit her for no reason if that dog didn't come running out and start the incident. And that's where I'm at with this. I'm concerned with, you know, the only way we know that that can't happen again, whether it's Miss Mantooth's dog or another dog that has, you know, a cross word or cross way with this other dog with with uh, um. Ms. Sturgis's dog, that's my main concern. And, you know, if we can create, make a situation where that dog can't get out again, that's where I'm at with it. I think really in the end, to me, the bite, you know, obviously it's a severe bite should not be predicated on, you know, it, even if it was the King Shepherd that bit her, it would never have happened if that dog didn't run up on her. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. So I think that some sort of measure should be taken, whether it's reduced to a potentially dangerous, I'd be fine with that potentially it keeps the same stipulations but that's kind of where i'm at with it thanks tom and also um to your point um the two known injuries were um the puncture wound on the top of the head of the right. shepherd and her calf and the other dog fergus did not present with any wounds um just just the facts and, that's and true. really that's trying true. to I missed that part. just to um, add, add to that um uh, let's see um ed Yes, uh, actually, uh, I, I agree with Tom's uh, logic. It's exactly where I was um, with most of it. The bite on top of the dog's head, obviously the dog couldn't bite itself on top of the head. So there was some biting going on um, by the other dog. Uh, the other dog was at large, it did instigate uh, there is that potential there uh, for the incident to occur again. And I believe that, um, uh, you know, it, it, even if it was lowered to a potentially dangerous order, uh, which I think would be the, the, the worst, I mean, uh, the, the lowest that it should go uh, would be a potentially dangerous order because the potential is still there. Uh, for the dog to go at large and perhaps uh, instigate another incident with somebody else walking by uh, who the Sturgis dog or Fergus, whatever his name is, uh, uh, doesn't like or have, has a fear of. Um, that's what we're here for is to prevent it from happening again. So uh, I do agree with Tom's logic that um, uh, you know, potentially dangerous order may may fit here because the same, uh, I believe the same restrictions would apply in a potentially dangerous order. It's just basically a change of words. Um, and I think that would be best for all parties involved. Uh, it would reduce the dangerous order and it would keep uh, some precautions in line for the public and for the animals as well. So that's that's where I am. Uh, with it, and uh, I'm pretty much in line with Tom's. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Uh, Jennifer. Um, I think I'm on the same page with everything I've heard before. Uh, I think these were both young dogs, and I don't want to speculate and guess as to um, which dog actually committed the human bite. I will say that I found um, the trainer, Mr. Hansen's uh, testimony persuasive, um, but I do, you know, but he pointed out that this dog, <clears throat> that Fergus uh, does have some fear of shepherds. So I think that right, that alone maybe leaves the potential for something like this to happen again. I, in all honesty, I'm not convinced one way or the other, which dog actually, as I said, committed the human bite. But again, as Tom said, I don't think that's necessary to even reach that part of the decision because um, 
as we've already discussed, that we know without a without a doubt that this dog was off leash, it was at large, and we know that the shepherd didn't bite itself on the head. So those two things alone to me um, suggest that we keep an order in place. But since I um, don't want to speculate on the human bite, I would suggest that it be reduced to a potentially dangerous order just to cover the information we do know is undisputed. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth. Um, so I think, uh, well, the first thing is that I know, so unless you've actually been in a dog fight like this, it is very hard to understand how quick it is and how not obvious things are under these circumstances. And also how it is, it, it creates, I mean, you people are often in shock um, medically <laughs> after after something like this. It's, it's always very difficult um, for the brain to process it. It's just, that's just the way that it is. It's um, so, so things do happen that aren't so obvious. And, um, and so the, the circumstances of the case, the actual incident, um, I agree with everyone. The dog uh, was off lead and out in the street on a way, uh, not with its owner. So, and, and it caused the whole chain of, um, of actions after that. The, the bite itself, I, I find it very hard. It's, it's, it's when looking at the, the bite, and as I think some of you know, I've been um, working with working dogs for 25 years. So I've seen lots of uh, bites as well, and uh, lots of uh, interactions like this with dogs. And just the, the circumstances to create that type of injury, it's just, it's very difficult for me to, um, it's not very likely that Fergus actually did that bite, although it, it may, again, it was very fast. There's no blame here. It's just the, the looking at dog behavior and, and the way that dogs do bite. It looks like a, um, an opposition reflex type of bite where the dog was had some back pressure. And when dogs have back pressure, and they're, they're reaching out, even if they're just barely grabbing with their teeth, once they have healed pressure, they bite harder and it tears. That's just the way it is. That's just the way bites are. So it's just, it's just difficult circumstances. This is a difficult case. But for that reason, I, I really find it um, difficult to say which dog truly did this, uh, the, the, the severe dog bite. Um, nonetheless, uh, we had an, uh, um, we had an incident with the dog off lead. Therefore, you know, I'm inclined to re to keep it uh, to reduce it to a potentially dangerous. I would, though, however, in all fairness to um, the parties, uh, look at those conditions. I mean, I think some of them should sort of remain, remain in place, but I think we should um, really take a look at the the order in its entirety to determine which ones apply to this case in particular. That's it. Thank you, uh, Matthew. Hey, yeah, I just don't. I don't want to echo what everyone has said again. This is a very muddled case. We're never gonna truly know what happened. Um, what we can rely on is that Fergus got away, and there wouldn't have been an incident without Fergus being off leash. So I would be open to reducing it to a potentially dangerous order, but I would also like to look at the conditions because. Regardless of who did the biting, I think we need to leave some acknowledgement that this happened. Agreed. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I, it, um, just like you said, echoing everyone's, um, I think we're uh, all looking at maybe um, trying to find some middle ground here um, of what makes sense and how we can prevent this from happening again. And the prevention of that may be um, uh, safety at the front door and if it to elizabeth and and matthew's point um i'd be willing to look at um reducing it to a potentially dangerous order and also looking at um specific requirements within that order that may um, apply specifically to ferguson and, and may not apply to him so um those kinds of details level of detail if we want to discuss that further um those of us who were thinking maybe um reducing it to potentially dangerous order, but any specific um, 
I, I know that the council did not request anything specific, but did Elizabeth or Matthew, um, do we have anything um, that you were thinking of that we might offer as um, uh, potentially dangerous reduction from a dangerous order in, in its entirety or um, specific uh, leniencies on in areas? What areas were we thinking of? Oh, uh, yeah, either Elizabeth or Matthew, uh, or both, I <laughs> after you, however. I'm reviewing the order right now. I was pulling it up as well. I mean, the, the um, is the key lock room in here? I just need to step away and grab a battery. I'll be right back. Just need to charge yeah. my iPad. Yeah, key lock room is number two. Yeah. don't think that one applies here. It did not happen. I would agree. That wasn't the problem. Yeah, I agree as well that number two would yeah. be unnecessary. Yeah, I agree. The fence is in place with the proper locking mechanism, I believe. So that should, that's, that's fine. I think that's appropriate. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think a muzzle, I mean, I, you know, I, I hate to stray away from, from that. I mean, you know, you're walking down the street and it's a, another shepherd coming down the street. There could be a, a situation there. So I think a muzzle is totally appropriate. Yeah, I think that needs to stay. I don't know whether, you know, and the retractable leash, obviously the six foot leash, I think that's that's all good too. I mean, there was, not that we know that the, for sure she was walking on another type of leash, but there was some mentioned testimony that the, the type of leash she was using was not good. So this, that would be appropriate, I think. Keep the, the leash. Um, yeah, just to clarify, I think the only person that said that was Mrs. Mantooth about the, the lead. We don't know anything really about what she had on the dog. Right, but we wouldn't want a retractable leash. No, no, I understand. Leash. We don't want a retractable leash. No, no, I agree with you on that. I just wanted to make sure we didn't. I do think it's great in a newly adopted dog. I mean, we're, we're in the training portion of things. We have a fence in place. She has the insurance in place. So a lot of those things really apply and are pretty, pretty standard, which we feel good about. Um, so um, at this point, um, the double leashing and, and, and secondary barriers at doors are always something that prevents the running at large of the chain of events. And I think that those things stay in place. And um, so fencing and um, I mean, leash yeah. and barriers, I mean, those all stay uh, pretty much number two so far is the only one that we've mentioned, the crate and no, two lock door. Um, and what, 11 and 12. Oh, let me go there. I don't know if that's. I think the ship uh, has already sailed on number eleven. Yeah, right. I think it's already notified. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of done, and I don't know if it, uh, is. I don't. It's generally on a. I can't remember on a potentially dangerous if there is a postings usually on the prop on the premises. I don't think there is. Is there? Or is there? A, is the same thing as ever you say potentially there? I guess it might be. I just. I would remove two and twelve. And everything else can would stand. Number thirteen's been done. Yeah. They're being done. I'll be fine with that as well. Some, you know, two and twelve. So, um, so uh, we we would like to reduce the uh, dangerous order to play dangerous order and striking number two and twelve. Is that what we're talking? I mean, about? I don't I don't really care that much about twelve. I just I didn't know if it was normally in a. I don't think that it's normally in the potentially dangerous one. That's all. If it is, it is. If it isn't, it isn't. I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember um, without it in front of me either. I do see that Mr. Beard has his hand raised, although we're not accepting an additional testimony. Um, I don't know um, about acknowledgement at this moment. Um, of further I, input into I our just have a question. Office. We're not uh, open to further questions unless the uh, unless the commission has questions okay. so for you. Um, right. Okay. I just want to clarify. I just, what, 
Yeah. I want to clarify whether there need to be a sign on the door that's been there all this time or whether she can take that down. That's well, we what we're haven't discussing. decided yet. <laughs> we're still voting. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's not the key thing in my mind that would be of, of, of importance. I think all of the key factors of preventing um, uh, slipping out the front door or off um, away from the owner. I think those are the key things in this order that that would make um, to, to ensure pet and and uh, public safety. I think that's our goal. And I think th those would be in place. Um, you know, I don't have a whole lot else to say. Anything, anything else? I mean, two, maybe twelve, but it, it's twelve is no, neither here nor there for me. It's um, just sort of um, community acknowledgement, but it's not really um, a preventative <coughs> measure, in my opinion. So I, I don't feel strongly either way. Um, anyone else um, reduced to a potentially dangerous order? Striking number two that requires a, a lock and keyed crate. Um, within the home, any other, um, do we feel strongly about 12 or any, any other comments on that? Does anybody have any strong feelings about 12? No, I'm, I'm either, I'm good either, either way. Um, I'll be fine dropping it. I would be okay with dropping it, yeah, you know, I'm... that's okay. Just so, to find some happy medium of, of making some leniency where we can, I feel like two and 12 make, make sense to me. And um, the other safety measures are, are most important to me. So I'm, I'm okay with that if the rest so, of the group is as well. Are we ready to make a motion? I'll I make a motion. We We're ready. Okay, good. <laughs> I make a motion to downgrade this order to a dangerous order with the conditions in place as already specified. A potentially, I'm sorry, a potentially dangerous from dangerous to potentially dangerous. Thank you. Um, keeping the, uh, provi uh, the provisions in place with the exception of two and 12. A second. All, right. All in favor? Thanks everyone. Tough case, but we, we, was, we did a great job. And we wish all the best to everyone involved. And we thank you all for being here today. Um, and um, we hope that your community and yourselves heal. Thank you again. I think Mr. Beard still has his hand raised. So does he have another question about the order or did he just forget to put his hand down? Uh, uh, I yeah. forgot to put my hand down. There was a, I do have one other question. There was. What did you decide about the insurance? You did have a homeowner's policy in place. Did you require additional insurance for this dog? I believe the the order, the potentially dangerous order, does provide for um, explanation of holding an insurance policy of a of an amount of three hundred thousand, and that and that did hold. Yes. Very well. All right. And again, our decision here is a recommendation to the chief of police. So the final decision won't be rendered until he's got a chance to look at it. He or she, I guess it's a she now. Very well. Thank you all. Thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Phil, do we have... Um, is that it today? I think that's it for cases. <laughs> Just had that case. Uh, the only other things we would have are the minutes and the adjournment afterwards. Um, I did send the minutes to you, Stephanie. Should okay. be popping in. Great. Am I allowed to go now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. While well, Stephanie reviews the minutes, I appreciate I missed you guys last month. I was out doing a density, a raccoon density study at Sandy Point State Park. Any any guesses as to how many raccoons were? <laughs> how many unique raccoons? That, any guesses? What's the time frame? It was, it, well, it could have been 10 days. It could have been 15 days. It ended up being 15 days based on the, the protocol. I'm going to shoot for 20. Man, you're way low. 
Are you asking how many different, how many raccoons total or how many different? Yeah, we caught 100, 116 unique raccoons in a three square kilometer area near Sandy Point State Park. Wow. How's that? Ends up being about 38, track? about 38.8 per square kilometer. So that's what I was doing. It's, I was out at Sandy Point chasing raccoons while you guys were in here. <laughs> in your business, so thank you. All. Oh, man. Have you done that previously? That's our first actual density study. We just actually just started trapping mice for a study on the USDA property in Beltsville. Oh, cool. It was interesting. All right, Steph, you ready? I want to jam us up. <laughs> You're muted. There you go. Still muted. Sorry, um, I click, click away and actually there's like a two step um, code verification process. So it takes me a minute. <laughs> Give me one more second. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it actually for our density study came down to one raccoon. It, the, the, the protocol said that if you caught 75 animals and then there was the percent of change between day eight and day nine, um, if it was more than 5%. So after day eight, we caught 89 animals. We had to catch five to go to day 15. Four, we were done, and we, we pulled 47 of the 50 traps. We had three, and in the last three traps, we caught two, which was <laughs> 15. We were all making plans. We were making plans like this is over, and one of them was in a trap that kind of had moved to a spot. It just filled a spot in on the map. We never expected to catch an animal there, and I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> but that shows you what you, know. you never know. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Phil, everything looks correct. Thank you guys for your patience. It takes a minute. <laughs> Excellent. So um, we will move to ratify the minutes um, from last meeting. I, I move to, to ratify the minutes. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? I guess uh, I wasn't there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> great. Any other um, business? Um, housekeeping that we need to attend to? Uh, not on my end. I think everything's doing great. How's how's the news that you gave us last time? How's that going? I don't think, You're was involved? Tom here for that? Oh. Yeah, I think I was. Yeah, I heard. Okay. That, was yeah. that must have been the time before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> everything's progressing well. We're expecting in March, so we are, are very excited. And uh, as always, um, I feel behind. Are we ready? Probably never ready. So <laughs> I feel like there's a million things I should have done by now and in preparation, but we're getting there. So, um, but it's all wonderful and we're just enjoying every moment. Thanks for asking. Um, Perfect. Yeah. You can see that glow going on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time coming. So we're very, very excited to be parents, but, um, but yeah, so um, I guess we will, um, see each other in the beginning of December. So in the meantime, I hope everyone has a happy holiday and Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I think we just have the motion to adjourn, right? Yep. Yeah. Have a yeah. Motion. Good to see you guys. I'll, see you with us. Yep. I'll, right. I'll, make, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right. Got it. All in favor. Thank bye you guys. guys. Yes. Thank Next you. Month. Thanksgiving. Bye bye. Thanks, have everybody. a good one. Have a lovely holiday. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks Robin. Thanks Robin.